and good Sunday morning to you. Welcome into Capitol View. I'm David Goins. Thanks for being with us. We'll be joined by the Democrat candidate for state treasurer a little bit later on, Karen Seeley Garcia. Plus, we may have the clearest indication yet of where the Arkansas Senate race, close, it is, close as it is, does stand. We'll break that down with our political long table, Alice Stewart and Max Brantley, a little bit later. But first, Arkansas may look to run its own exchange for people to buy health insurance, but it won't happen as soon as originally thought. The health insurance marketplace board on Wednesday voting to delay the implementation of a state-run exchange until 2016, with coverage to start in 2017. Why the delay? Well, technological infrastructure, the guts that essentially make websites go, the state wanting to avoid what happened with healthcare.gov nationally last fall. While well, a group that says Secretary of State's office used the wrong deadline for new ballot titles for this year will make arguments to the state Supreme Court next month. Justices will hear arguments starting on October 9th. The group alleges Secretary of State Mark Martin waited too long to collect the petition for the ballot title aiming to legalize alcohol sales statewide. Now, the Arkansas Constitution said petitions need to be filed no later than three months before Election Day, but this year that fell on July 4th, which we know is a holiday, so Martin gave groups until the next business day, the 7th, to submit those petitions. That could also affect the minimum wage ballot initiative. After Mike Ross says he wants to exempt military retiree pay if elected, the state legislature looks closer at the issue earlier this week. Now, an interim study from uh, Van Buren Republican Charlene Fight outlined the estimated $17 million impact to the state budget if Arkansas stopped taxing retired military income. Now, supporters point out that Arkansas is the only state in the South and really from the West Coast across the uh, to the East Coast, uh, at least on the southern portion of the country, that doesn't offer some form of exemption for military pay. The state Supreme Court throws a suspended judge off the bench permanently. Judge Mike Maggio learned his fate on Thursday when the high court banned him from being a judge for life and also stopped his $138,000 a year state salary. Now, Maggio was suspended back in the spring after disparaging remarks surfaced that he'd made on a bulletin board towards women and minorities and also commenting on the private adoption of a Hollywood film star. Now, the next stop the governor, or excuse me, the next step is for the governor to replace Maggio in Faulkner County. Judicial vacancies tend to be a priority for us because we know that it's just not a matter of having a seat filled. It's a building backlog of cases, which a lot of our courts have already. And anything we can do to help move that process along and alleviate that pressure on the court system, we, we try to accommodate. Now, an announcement on a replacement is expected early this week. Well, the race for Senate dominating the airwaves as candidates and third-party groups flood television with ads, but as important as those ads are, both Mark, Mark Pryor and Tom Cotton's campaigns relying very much on a more personal touch as well. Democratic Party of Arkansas. At an unassuming house in Conway, the Faulkner County effort to re-elect Mark Pryor well underway. Hi, this is Jackson, Arkansas Democratic Party. How are you doing? You get that connection with the voter. You get to listen to the voter. You get to talk to the voter. And you get to have a meaningful conversation with the voter. 19-year-old Geneve Sharma, one part of a Get Out the Vote campaign, the Pryor camp says extends to over 40 offices statewide. Well, we've done it before in the past but probably never to this extent. Campaign manager Jeff Weaver says it's an acknowledgement of a close and winnable race. Yeah, we've got Arkansas, Arkansans talking to Arkansans about voting and talking about Mark Pryor's record and talking about Tom Cotton's record. And the Democrats aren't alone. What issues are, are most important to them that will really change this election? Fred Brown says the GOP has a plan built around smartphone apps identifying voters by household and finding out what makes them vote and when they vote. And that's how you're really going to convince people with that neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor contact which is why the Republicans working with the state party, we've been here since, you know, uh, since 2013, building out a ground game. Republicans say they have more than a dozen offices of their own statewide and that Democrats' registration efforts will fall short, allowing the GOP to take Arkansas and the U.S. Senate. So in the next 60 days, don't be surprised if you get a call and the voice on the other end represents a campaign. How are you doing this afternoon, sir? This neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor contact is extremely important. It kind of cuts right through the chase of the advertising.
And of course, that advertising will not let up before November 4th. Campaigns, in fact, have already sold out the airways for the entire final month of the campaign. While a candidate for Congress says he not only supports raising Arkansas's minimum wage, he'll fight to raise the federal minimum wage as well. Pat Hayes in the 2nd District holding a roundtable in North Little Rock on Wednesday. The former mayor says he's supported the effort to raise Arkansas's minimum wage to $8.50 for months, but also thinks that $7.25 level at the federal level needs to change too. And what that magic number is, yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but we look forward to going to Congress and, 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 uh, and doing all we can to support, you know, both job reduction as well as uh, people having a livable wage. His opponent, Republican French Hill, said on Wednesday that Hayes is a 26-year career politician that's continually raised taxes to increase his own salary. He has indicated, though, French Hill, that he would vote for the minimum wage effort as long as he ensures it does not negatively affect jobs. Well, coming up after a quick break. Karen Seeley Garcia, she's running for state treasurer. Hear what she says it's like to be the next Democrat candidate for that office following Martha Schaffner and what her vision for that office is. I'm David Goins. You're watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. At home, Tom Cotton says one thing, but in Washington, he does another. And there's a record of it. Cotton voted to cut Social Security benefits and raise the retirement age to 70. On Medicare, Cotton voted to replace it with a voucher and make seniors pay thousands more. We can't trust Tom Cotton to protect seniors because the record shows he hasn't. The Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. I'm Patrick Henry Hayes, and as mayor, we attracted all kinds of businesses to North Little Rock, and that means all kinds of jobs. We got rid of unnecessary regulations, so it's easy to move here. And by creating incentives to attract big companies like Caterpillar, we were able to attract lots of smaller companies like Blue Bell Ice Cream. Now, Congress should be doing the same thing. That's why I approve this message. Uh, can't forget about the jobs from the ballpark. Come on, Harper, let's go with ball game, man. Aladdin Rugs and Home Decor is now open in West Little Rock, and with our recent North Little Rock expansion, we have hundreds more rugs in stock. For us, contemporary and traditional rugs in all shapes and sizes, starting at $99, along with the latest styles and trends in home decor. You can find fun and funky or elegant and beautiful all in one place with excellent customer service. New designs of wallpaper are in stock. Aladdin Rugs and Home Decor in North Little Rock on JFK and our new location at Markham and Chenal in West Little Rock behind Luby's. Come by today. Hi, I'm Missy Gibson. At John Gibson Auto Sales, we offer the newest and cleanest inventory of any buy here, pay here dealer in the state. We have financing options regardless of your past credit history. You can view online or in person over 800 cars, trucks, SUVs, motorcycles, ATVs, boats, trailers, and RVs. My family and I would like to invite you to 1425 Airport Road in beautiful hot springs for a test drive or check out our website at johngibsonautosales.com and we will have your purchase ready when you get here. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back. If you've been watching in recent weeks, you've noticed we're working to bring you as many candidates for statewide office as we can leading up to November 4th. This morning, we're looking at one of the more recently embattled constitutional offices over the last couple of years. State Treasurer Karen C. Lee Garcia is a Democrat seeking that seat, and she joins us this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity. Absolutely. Okay, so let's start. This is kind of where we start for, for all these statewide candidates. Um, Treasurer, I know you're a certified public accountant. There's a big difference between being a CPA and then deciding to jump into statewide politics. Talk to me about why you decided to get in this race. Well, I would be happy to. I am a professional accountant, not a professional politician. Mm -hmm. As you said, I'm a certified public accountant for 30 years. And the last 26, I was with a Fortune 100 company, Warehouser. Mm -hmm. And in Warehouser, I earned a reputation as a no-nonsense accountant. And the company sought me out to send me across the world, literally at locations, to implement financial management systems, internal controls, train the staff. I have personally had responsibility for multi-million dollar budgets, billion dollar budgets, and safeguarding the company's assets and extensive experience 
supervising and financial management. I've been doing this job in the private sector and it's exciting to me as a professional accountant to be able to take this skill set and take it to the state capitol and bring reform and restore the trust to the state treasurer's office to all the people in Arkansas. And you mentioned trust on your website really your issues two things that both dealing with ethics one's a business code of ethics and says a supplier code of ethics is that really what this this race is about restoring trust in an ethical way in, in light of what we saw with, with Martha Schaffner a couple years ago? Well, I've been traveling this whole state of Arkansas, and what I hear back from people is that honesty does matter, ethics does matter, integrity does matter, and I've developed that business code of ethics to restore that and that faith to all the people in the office of the state treasurer. And my detailed plan, as you mentioned, is on my website, GarciaForTreasure.com. But in summary, it, it says that there will not be any gifts received by the state treasurer nor any employee in the state treasurer's office. Mm -hmm. There won't be any backroom deals, no cronyism, and full transparency of all transactions, spending as well as investments. Your Republican opponent, uh, Dennis Milligan, has mentioned his own kind of ethics plan of not taking any, any gifts. What do you see as the big difference between yourself and, and Republican Dennis Milligan in this race? Well, as I said, I'm a professional accountant not the professional politician. I have the experience, the qualifications, and I have the personal experience with billion dollar budgets, managing financial systems. Uh, my opponent, uh, on the other hand, bless his heart, uh, what can I say, one Republican newspaper columnist said that he was a complete embarrassment to himself and to their party. And when you look at the facts, I think you have to agree. Just earlier this year during the Republican primary, it was reported that Dennis Milligan blackmailed or attempted to blackmail his opponent in right. the primary out Beard. of the primary. Do you think that's something that, that voters will, will be reticent of or is that something you've heard any anybody talking about when you when you go out and meet with people? Well they've never heard of anything like that mm -hmm. and uh, of all places it occurred at a Krispy Kreme donut shop. We do not need to go from Martha Schaffner's pie boxes to Dennis Milligan's Krispy Kreme donut boxes and that's not the only thing. As the Saline County Circuit Clerk there are numerous lawsuits against him pending. Right now there are several pending. One, just one that was settled was multi-thousands of dollars that's a waste of taxpayer money. We don't need more embarrassment in the treasurer's office. We need a professional, we need a professional accountant to go in that knows what they're doing and is there for the right reason. And that's why I have Republicans, independents, and Democrats supporting me because I am the most qualified for this office. And well, let's look at just kind of the reality of recent statewide elections. If you have uh, an R next to your name, especially on down ballot races like state treasurer, 2010 is any indicator, they win. The Democrats have not won. Uh, how do you how do you counteract that and and and, and be able to? overcome? Well, based on what happened uh, in, at the treasurer's office, it has Democrat. gotten a little bit more attention mm -hmm. and people do not want that to happen again. And when you look at the records, and I'm talking to people across the state, I find more people are independent and are wanting to put the most qualified person right. there. Any worry that since Schaffner is a Democrat that could rub off on you negatively? I'm not worried about it because I'm a professional accountant, not a professional politician. That's not why I am running for the Arkansas State Treasurer's Office. Mm -hmm. I know I have the skill set to take to the Treasurer's Office to do the job, to get it done, and restore 
all the people's trust in the state treasurer's office. Okay, well, about seven more weeks in this race. And uh, Karen Seeley Garcia, very nice to meet you. And thank you so much for coming in this morning. Well, thank you. Okay, very good. All right, well, when we come back, is the Senate race starting to lean one way or another? We break down the latest in prior cotton Senate race, including the newest ad that invokes the Koch brothers. We'll tell you more about that with our political long table. I'm David Goins. You have Capitol View on Sunday morning. Get the new garment you've always wanted with Empire Today's big buy one, get one free sale. Buy one room and get another room free. That includes carpet with padding materials and installation. Shop from the comfort of home for quality brands like Mohawk and Shaw. For a limited time with Empire, buy one room and get one free. Schedule a free estimate now. 800-588-2300 Empire Today. There are no marshmallows in this box of Lucky Charms. Huh. Weird. <laughs> Seriously? What? They're, They're magically, magically delicious. delicious. <gasps> Test us, Judo! More fruit in the filling. Yeah. Mmm. Yeah. Warm, plenty, gooey. Test us, Judo! Now with more fruit! On TV, Mark Pryor talks about the health care law he helped pass. What Pryor doesn't say is that law was Obamacare, or that it cuts over $700 billion from our Medicare and will cut benefits seniors rely on. Obamacare meant threatened insurance plans, higher premiums, and broken promises. Are we going to be able to stick with our plan? The answer is yes. Mark Pryor. What he doesn't say tells us everything we need to know. Crossroads GPS is responsible for the content of this advertising. <laughs> Here's something fun to do with hot dogs. <laughs> Make easy crescent dogs. Pillsbury Crescent Rolls. Make dinner. Pop. What should we do for dinner? Pizza. With a little help. It's easy to whip up a great meal on a weeknight. Pepperoni on your side. More pepperoni. <laughs> Pizza crust. Make dinner pop. Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back. We welcome in our political long table for this Sunday morning. She's the host of the Alice Stewart Show on Fresh Talk 96.5. Alice Stewart, he's the editor of the Arkansas Times. I don't need to read the screen. I know who you are. Max <laughs> Brantley, welcome back, sir. Bye. Okay, uh, let's start with uh, something from the New York Times uh, upshot, which follows the political campaigns pretty closely uh, in the U.S. Senate race between Mark Pryor and Tom Cotton. Uh, this week, I uh, said uh, Arkansas could be the first state where the GOP turns a big opportunity to perhaps take the Senate into a big lead in the polls. Now, over the last month, it goes on to say, however, a new wave of polls makes it fairly clear that Tom Cotton, the Republican, now has an advantage. Max, I want to start with you. Uh, the lead that we've seen for Cotton, at least in these polls, as they coalesce, is this reversible for Pryor? If so, how does he do it? Well, I, I think it's hard to, to beat a trend. But, you know, the, uh, the New York Times also cooperates with something called this battleground uh, tracking, which is not exactly a poll, but it's a, it's a 100,000 person panel mm -hmm. that they go back to over a period of time. And they released that result this week, and that showed 39, 38 cotton. That's, that's with X number of undecided, but a lean toward the Republican. I think the absolute conclusion of the people who manipulate the numbers is, is that you have to give the probability to Tom Cotton. I think if there's any way to turn it around, it ought to be on issues. And, and the issues are very simple. Uh, and, and Mark Pryor is trying to prove it with specifics. I don't know if it's working. Tom Cotton is absolutely an advocate for smaller government and for less spending. In Arkansas, a poor state, that inevitably translates into reductions in programs which all have their supporters. Can that be made to move voters? I don't know. I, I think there are 
certainly smaller government is, is the cornerstone of, of what the a Republican uh, Party wants. That's what we need in government, and that includes tough decisions. But on, on the polls, it, it, clearly Tom Cotton has uh, done tremendous in the last uh, dozen or so polls he's been he's been leading and if you have the New York Times acknowledging that Tom Cotton's going to do well or, or win by any margin in November that's not good news for for Mark Pryor I like to look at the 538 poll it is a great comprehensive look at mm -hmm. many polls it looks at the historical data it looks at demographics they have crunched the numbers in many polls and looked at what's going to happen in November they have Tom Cotton ahead by three uh, at this stage of the game and a 71 percent chance of victory in November and that is a very comprehensive look at as Max says the trends of the polls. It, it's, but it does so happen in the last week Sam Wang I think is his name who heads a political research institute at Princeton who says okay all these guys are putting their fingers on the on on the scales. That is, mm -hmm. 538 doesn't go just by poll numbers. They take the poll numbers, but then they add some analysis based on other data to get sure. their, their projection. Nate Silver's been pretty successful. Yep. Wang points out, however, that Nate Silver missed some races in, in 2012 that he got correct going strictly by the polls. Wang says Pryor's going to win. I, I'm not ready to predict that anything that is going to be very close, but uh, and, and I would have to give Tom Cotton the edge, but you have to remember this is a race that the Republicans thought was won before it began. Well, they thought this was Blanche Lincoln Redux, that Mark Pryor was dead, it was right. going to be a march to victory. And I think the fact that it is still a statistical dead heat, however you you, you parse the one point mm -hmm. to three point leads, it's a statistical Let's, dead I, heat. Well, that's I that's pretty amazing. One really. thing though, if you right. can dial it back all you want and lower the expectations, the fact we have a two term very popular uh, U.S. Senator that still can't pull out of 40s, that's not good. He's not in a good spot and, and that trend will continue because Congressman Cotton is right on the issues and resonates with the people of Arkansas and and, and they, certainly we know that the president it doesn't is resonate very much with me I have to say and I'm not, I'm not alone you know he's voted against Children's Hospital he's voted he's voted against disaster funding release he's voted against the farm bill these, these are empirical facts these are true they're they're not campaign rhetoric and whether now, it, now, it may not voters, matter to the voter, right. I'm not saying, but th these are legitimate issues and worth talking let's, about. Let's look at Pryor's latest ad on Friday, which may be in response to you know a group of you know focus group essentially saying they don't know a whole lot about who's who's funding the various campaigns. Let's take a look at this ad uh, based in Fordyce. <clears throat> I'm Mark Pryor, and I approve this message. They walked in two weeks before Christmas and said, this plan is closed. It pretty much killed this town. Now, these same New York billionaires are backing Tom Cotton with big, expensive TV ads attacking Mark Pryor. No wonder Cotton promised to protect their special tax breaks for moving factories and jobs overseas. Nobody should be able to, to buy a Senate seat. Nobody. I don't know that I can trust Tom Cotton. Okay, are voters going to respond to this idea of outside interest buying a Senate seat? Well, and, and there's a lot to be said. Negative ads, as much as everyone complains about them, they do work, they do move the dial. But yep. this one, this this doesn't resonate with the people of Arkansas. And we talk about uh, tax breaks for, for large businesses. Well, let's address that by reducing the corporate tax rate. That's one way to go about preventing businesses from moving overseas. Uh, I think... Uh, We'll talk about the ad war. Mark Pryor's nonsense ad about Congressman Cotton bringing Ebola to America that backfired. That was that <laughs> well, was a joke. Even MSNBC. Well, in fact, the ad didn't say that. Yeah. First of all, he didn't accuse Tom Cotton of bringing Ebola to America. He accused him of voting against funding for pandemic research, which again was true. Now this ad is a better effort by Mark Pryor to tie the Cokes to Cotton than he's done previously. The, the Cotton people this week have been laughing. They had a focus group in which they had a bunch of Arkansas women in, and they didn't mm -hmm. know the Cokes from Pepsi-Cola. Well, that's and true. And I don't think that's just, and, just and Arkansas, Arkansas women. I, Arkansas I don't doubt men that. I'm, sure, I'm sure that's true. And so yeah. what they've... They sh it's too bad they don't know because the Cokes have an agenda. They're spending $400 million this year to take over the state legislatures and the Congress for Republican candidates. And they have a very clear agenda linked to very specific voting issues. And they said at a, at a, at a meeting Tom Cotton attended that Tom Cotton has a 100% AFP, which is Americans for Prosperity Coke organization voting record. This is a legitimate campaign issue. But... I don't think it translates very well. Uh, However, what Mark Pryor has done in this ad is to say, you may not know the Cokes, and you may not know this bigger story, 
but they own this plant in Arkansas and they put people out of work. Well, I think that, that is, that's that's worth a shot. Anyway. I, well, it's a, it's a shot, but that noodle's not going to stick to the wall. The, the people of Arkansas are concerned with a few things, and this is what the grassroots organization that the Republican Party has uh, in full effect across the state of Arkansas. People are concerned with health care, Obamacare. They're concerned now with national security, and they're beginning to, as they have reason to, uh, not trust what the Democrats are saying. We have. Barack Obama running for president saying al-Qaeda's on his heels. We're now at war with ISIS. We're saying, uh, Mark Pryor saying that he's with Arkansas first, been in Washington for 12 years, has voted with Obama 90% of the time. People of Arkansas realize they can't trust Mark Pryor any more than they can't trust Barack Obama, and that's why we're seeing his poll numbers the way they are, and that's why we're seeing independents and the undecideds uh, moving towards Congressman Cotton. Max, 15 well, seconds. we haven't seen much movement. In fact, yeah. I mean, Tom Cotton's numbers haven't it's haven't grown close. since the start. It's been it's. In fact, I'm waiting to see what finally does make the final move. Okay, uh, Alice Stewart, Max Bradley, we didn't even talk about the governor's race today. That's that's how that's how quick time's going <laughs> and, and, and how interesting the Senate race is. But we'll keep you on speed dial, Alice Stewart, Max Bradley. Sure. Thanks for joining us this morning. You bet. Thank you. All right. Well, when we come back, we are back with a whole lot more, including an exciting announcement when it comes to the governor's race aforementioned. I'm David Goins. You are watching Capitol View on Sunday morning. <sighs> Test us, Judah. Small fruit in the filling. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Warm, flaky, gooey. Test us, Now with more fruit. Tino's Pizza Rolls get you there in just 60 seconds. Behind a campaign that's been called a distortion and mostly false, Congressman Cotton is hiding a disturbing record. Cotton voted to raise the eligibility age for Medicare to 70. Cotton even voted to raise the eligibility age for Social Security to 70. Mark Pryor wrote legislation to stop those who'd raise the Medicare eligibility age. He protects Medicare and Social Security for all of us. Senate Majority PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. You're watching Capitol View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And welcome back to Capitol View. We are excited to announce that the very first statewide governor's debate will be airing on stations all throughout uh, the state of Arkansas next Friday night on September 19th. Uh, airs on seven on, uh, at 7 o'clock on KRK in Little Rock and our affiliates all across the state of Arkansas. Joined this morning by Bob Clausen. Thanks for waking up so early. Hey, uh, not a problem. You know, uh, there's no better place to spend your Sunday morning than a right. Capitol View. That's right. And we'll be uh, moderating with Mike Ross and Asa Hutchison. Uh, and that will be uh, obviously an interesting race because this is the first time, or interesting debate, because this is the first time either one of them have sat down for a debate. Yeah. They've done forums at different organizations, but really a chance for us to, to, to get down to some of the key issues. And it's one of those things where, I mean, by now, the voting public has been bombarded with the ads, both from the campaigns, from special interest groups. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks, you know, talking to them, you've talked to them, too, kind of getting a little turned off. This is a great opportunity to sit down with the candidates, talk to them the, about the issues, and hopefully uh, get the voter out there better informed than they already are. And it's going to be kind of a, I guess, a casual environment. You know, it's, it's not going to be, uh, you know, uh, futons and fondue. Do, but right. it's, it's going to get it's going to get dicey, and we're going to have them mix it up a little bit, find well, out why people should vote for them. Well, a lot of times you see a debate, and it's the podium and the moderator, and right. you know, both of us being uh, you know involved in this, it'll be an opportunity to kind of be almost sitting at a table, not not you know probably dissimilar from what you see on Capitol View on mm -hmm. Sunday morning, but but certainly a, a longer format and an opportunity to really delve deeply into to those key issues. Yeah, because a lot of folks are used to the thing. Okay, we're going to talk about. which is why we put whole grain first in every General Mills Big G cereal. What matters most should always come first. General Mills, look for the Big G. It means goodness first. <laughs> he loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. <laughs> Warm and flaky and 15, everyone loves Pillsbury Grahams. Make dinner pop. What should we do for dinner? Pizza. With a little help. It's easy to whip up a great meal on a weeknight. Pepperoni on your side. More pepperoni. <laughs> Cheers. Pillsbury Pizza.
Pizza Crust. Make dinner pop. <laughs> <laughs> no, he loves me. He loves me now. He loves me. He loves me now. He loves me. <laughs> Warm and flaky in 15. Everyone loves Pillsbury Grahams. Make dinner pop. What should we do for dinner? Pizza. With a little help. It's easy to whip up a great meal on a weeknight. Pepperoni on your side. More pepperoni. <laughs> Pillsbury Pizza Crust. Make dinner pop. Many people are very concerned about where they're going to have health coverage. When Mark Pryor said that we would be able to keep our doctor, we'd be able to keep our insurance, he flat out lied to the American people. A lot of the decisions he makes falls right alongside of Obama. He's more worried about supporting his friends in Washington and really taking care of the people that he's supposed to represent. People that are supposed to represent us, they need to be making a difference. 